We just got some brand new news in regards to the SEC's appeal against Ripple in the Ripple SEC case. And in this video, we're going to be talking about everything you need to know about what we just learned. Meta Law Man, a very popular attorney in the XRP community, just went on a live stream talking about all the important details involving this appeal going forward. In this video, I want to break down all the most important facts like what the SEC's chance of actually winning this appeal are, how long this is going to take to get resolved, what are some realistic outcomes for how this gets resolved. In this video, I'm going to be breaking down everything you need to understand, so make sure to stick around for this whole thing. Like always, your support means so much to this channel. Thank you to everyone who takes the time to like these videos and subscribe to the channel. These two simple things really do help me out so much. Also, if you ever need a place to buy some XRP, make sure to check out my favorite exchange uphold down in the description of this video. With that said, though, let's jump right into it, and I hope you guys enjoy the content. So I want to start this video off and just quickly cover something that I believe is really important to understand right now, and that actually came out of a different interview that happened earlier today with Kamala Harris. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because for a while, Kamala Harris has been trying to sell the idea that she is pivoting on her anti-cryptocurrency stance. She is trying to say that she wants to turn a leaf for the Democrats and be pro-crypto, but we actually heard something pretty shocking earlier today that flies in the face of that. And that is that Kamala Harris was directly asked, would you change anything that happened under the Biden administration? And she said, no. Now, this is pretty shocking, honestly, not that surprising, but it's pretty shocking in the fact that she has been trying to really separate herself from Joe Biden. So just from a political standpoint, Talk about a horrible answer. How could you possibly say no? But she did say no, and I think this really does show that she could care less about the cryptocurrency industry. She is doing whatever she can to get as many votes as possible, and this is something that we likely thought was happening in regards to her support for cryptocurrency. But the fact that she couldn't even come out and think of a single thing that has gone wrong under the Biden admin, I mean, we have been suffering from Operation Choke Point 2.0 for four years now in which the Democrats purposely attacked the entire cryptocurrency industry and tried to cut it off completely from the United States financial system. Kamala Harris apparently didn't think this was a big enough deal to even come to her mind when talking about things she would change. So I just want to bring this to people's attention because we have been hopeful in maybe Democrats actually pivoting on this cryptocurrency issue. But my interpretation of these comments is that absolutely nothing is going to change, and in many ways, things could actually be just as bad, if not worse. I'm going to talk about more about that at the end of the video on how exactly things could get worse, so make sure to stick around till the end. I want to transition, though, and talk about the Meta Law Man interview, because he did say some extremely important things that we have not talked about yet on this channel. First of all, Meta Law Man made one thing extremely clear. He believes the SEC appealing this case is going to end up being a mistake. And the reason why he thinks it's going to be a mistake is for the same reason Jeremy Hogan actually outlined on X the other day. Now, to have two smart attorneys coming out and saying this appeal is a big mistake, not a great look for the SEC, but definitely a great look for XRP investors. So the reason why both of these high-powered attorneys think that this appeal is actually a mistake is because they are elevating a bad case to the Second Circuit. The SEC clearly didn't bring good facts forward in the Ripple SEC case. How do I know that? Well, the judge pretty much told them there's really nothing here. When it came down to a penalty for Ripple, the SEC was forced to prove a single investor that was hurt because of Ripple sales. And let's just be clear, Ripple had a lot of sales, probably hundreds of thousands to millions. And the SEC did not find a single sale in which someone was harmed. So... This was a huge issue for the SEC. They could not find the appropriate facts to win this case. And now they are elevating this case to the Second Circuit in a place where if they lose, it is going to do exponentially more damage to the agency. So Meta Law Man reflected this same viewpoint as Jeremy Hogan in why would you elevate a case this bad to a circuit that could create even more damage for all the other cryptocurrency cases you are currently litigating. This right here is one of the reasons why I didn't think the SEC was going to appeal. I thought they were going to smarten up. I thought they were going to say, you know what? We lost this case, but there's other cases. Let's go win those other cases. This one is clearly not our case. 
That's not what they chose to do. And Metal Law Man and Jeremy Hogan thinks this is a mistake. Now, the other thing that Metal Law Man said that was in line with Jeremy Hogan is that the programmatic sale issue is not a good one for the SEC. The SEC is likely when we find out what they're appealing on October 16th or 17th, the SEC is going to have to make it clear, what are we even appealing? And one of the obvious things is those programmatic sales. Metal Law Man does not think the SEC is going to get these programmatic sales overturned. And the reason for that is it's actually very simple. To be investing in a company, you have to be expecting profits. You have to be putting an investment into a vehicle and expecting some kind of profit or some kind of return on the underlying company on the other side. When you go to Coinbase and you buy XRP, how in the world would you be expecting a profit from Ripple? You don't even know who you're buying that XRP from. For all you know, you're buying that XRP from me. For all you know, you're buying that XRP from Ripple. For all you know, you're buying that XRP from Stella. It could literally be anyone selling XRP. So how in the world is there some kind of promise or link? So how in the world could that be an investment contract when you don't even know who you are buying the XRP from? It's a massive hole in the SEC's case, and Metal Law Man really confirms the fact that he doesn't think the SEC is going to have any success appealing this issue. The other big issue for the SEC is the fact that they couldn't prove any damages, and this is another part the SEC is likely going to be trying appealing. If they couldn't find anyone who lost money buying XRP from Ripple off the start, how are they going to go back and refine those people? They're probably not going to be able to. Now, Metal Law Man did talk about how this was a big issue for the SEC in terms of other cases, and this alone could be the reason they are looking to appeal because it would be so damaging in having to prove individuals were hurt because that's kind of how they get around a lot of winning cases. They just threaten to do all this stuff. They don't actually have to prove anyone was hurt, and therefore people just settle to get out of the issue. In this case specifically, Judge Torres is like, go find someone who got hurt. The SEC couldn't do it. And now they're sitting there saying, do we always now going forward have to find someone that was hurt? Because that would be pretty bad for us. So that's putting the SEC in a bit of a pickle here. But like we talked about, they never found anyone before who was hurt. I don't think they're going to find anyone now. And the last thing that they could be appealing here would just be the overall penalty or fine. Once again, Metal Law Man thinks that's an extremely weak appeal. So now we have two high profile attorneys kind of coming out and saying this appeal was a bad idea. Now, Metal Law Man actually added that he thinks it's likely that Ripple could cross appeal. And if Ripple was to cross appeal, essentially what would be happening is Ripple would be going after those institutional sales. And this is where things get very interesting, in my opinion, because he talked about something I had never really heard before. And that is these institutional sales not being securities either. Now, Metal Law Man actually came out and said that he doesn't believe these institutional sales are securities. And the reason for that is, is because you can buy things at bulk at a discount. You can buy oranges at bulk at a discount. You can buy salsa at Costco at bulk at a discount. It doesn't make any of those things securities. That's essentially what these institutions were doing with Ripple. They were buying XRP at bulk from Ripple in order to get a cheaper price. Now, this is what Judge Torres said was a security. But Metal Law Man makes an extremely interesting argument on why this actually isn't a security, and it goes back to the orange and salsa thing we just talked about. Just because you're buying something at bulk doesn't make that a security. You're still buying a commodity at bulk, and you are getting a discount on that commodity, but that doesn't necessarily mean there is any implication that Ripple is going to raise the price of that commodity. It doesn't actually make any sense when you think about it, and this could actually be an even bigger issue for the SEC. Because if the Second Circuit takes a look at this issue and says, wait a minute, just because Ripple is selling a commodity at a discount, that doesn't necessarily make any of this a security. You can sell a commodity at a discount. There's no inherent expectation of profits because of that. You're just getting a cheaper commodity. Now, according to Metal Law Man, he actually thinks that Judge Torres got this part wrong, and there actually could be a chance that if Ripple cross-appealed, this got turned around in the Second Circuit, which would make it so the SEC essentially had their only win stripped away from them. This is a thought that I have not yet had, and it's a very interesting proposition, but to me, it actually also makes a ton of sense. Just because you're buying something cheap doesn't mean you should be expecting a profit you can buy something cheap and it could get much cheaper. 
when you go to the store and you buy something at a discount, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be going up in price. It just means you got a lower price because you are buying more. So like I said, this is a very interesting argument and one that I have not heard raised before. Now, the last thing I want to talk about here that I think is extremely interesting is he actually thinks there is a very large chance that this thing is not going to go the distance. He said he believes there is over a 50% chance that this case gets resolved prior to it actually making it to resolution. He believes that it is likely we do see a change in administration and the new SEC chair comes in and actually completely cleans things up. Now, this is something I have talked about before, but I didn't know how overly optimistic I was being. So it's very cool to see Meta Law Man actually come in and agree with some of these ideas and say, no, we could have an SEC come in and really just clear ship and go in and really right all the wrongs of the previous administration. So he actually believes there's over a 50% chance we don't go the distance, which is obviously very good in terms of a timeline, because if we got a new administration to come in, clear house at the SEC, implement new pro cryptocurrency rules and then those same commissioners said okay let's clean up a lot of these bad cases we have outstanding that means we would see a much faster resolution now coming back to the kamala harris issue we talked about earlier i doubt this is going to happen under anyone kamala puts in the sec i have a feeling she'll probably put someone in the sec who is anti-cryptocurrency and we're going to see the same exact thing we have seen for the last four years I would love to be wrong on that, but clearly by her coming out and saying, I would change nothing, we've been doing a great job, that's a pretty scary thought when you look about look at how bad a lot of this job has been. So, if we can get a change in administration, I do agree with Meta Law Man here, or maybe Meta Law Man agrees with me here, that there actually is a very high probability this case would end a lot sooner than many people anticipate. And the last thing I want to talk about, the last very interesting thing Meta Law Man really said in this interview was that he believes Gary Gensler steps down either way. He believes Gary Gensler is definitely fired if Trump comes in, which he said is certainly possible for Trump to do. And he says that Kamala Harris will probably force him to step down because even Democrats have been so critical of Gary Gensler, but he's not really convinced that even if he did step down, he would be replaced by someone who is really much better. Kamala Harris very well could replace him with another Democrat who once again just continues to attack the industry, maybe in a more subtle way, maybe in a less subtle way. We don't know, but there's no confirmation here that they would really be more pro cryptocurrency. It could actually get worse if we were really unlucky. So I just wanted to point that out. Guys, anyway, I hope this video really helped you understand some of the things that were talked about earlier today in terms of the appeal. In my opinion, all of this is extremely bullish in terms of Ripple winning this case, this case not going the distance most likely, XRP status of being not a security remaining, and also Ripple maybe even getting more clarity to run their business properly in the United States than they had previously. Almost everyone I've heard talk about this issue thinks this appeal is misguided, whether it is pro-SEC people or pro-Ripple people, and I don't think that's any coincidence. I think the SEC filed this appeal out of spite more than anything else, and I think it's going to come back to bite them if it does in fact go the distance. Guys, thank you so much for coming. I hope you enjoyed this update, and for now, pickle out.